Congressman Schiff, welcome back to The Issue Is. Thank you. It's good to be with you. So on a human level, as a man, as a congressman, as a citizen, what did it feel like to actually push that button and vote to impeach the president of the United States? And did it feel different than any other vote? Well, you know, uh, it's been said often that uh, at times like that you feel the weight of history and you quite literally do feel the weight of it. You, uh, you feel just the, the burden uh, of taking a step that has been taken seldom in our nation's history uh, and the responsibility that comes with it. Uh, but at the end of the day, my own conclusion was much like one of the constitutional scholars that testified. That is, if the conduct of this president uh, withholding a military aid, hundreds of millions of dollars, to an ally at war with Russia in order to get help in cheating in the next election, if that's not impeachable, then nothing is. So the decision itself um, wasn't difficult given the facts, but nonetheless you feel the real weight of it. So you not only were the last person to speak and give the Democrats closing argument, you also were rebutting the Republican argument for over three hours on the floor. What was that experience like and, and what did you make of the Republican argument? Well, what I had to weigh uh, during those, those rebuttal times when the Republicans were speaking, they were making, in my view, false statement after false statement. I had to pick and choose which ones to rebut because the more I spent time during the course of those three hours rebutting what the Republicans were saying, then the, the less time, <clears throat> excuse me, the less time I'd have at the end of the day for that closing argument. So I wanted to make sure that I reserved enough time. Um, but look, you know, that, that's the uh, dilemma that you have in a proceeding like that. Um, I, I think I was fortunate to have the opportunity to get the last word there. Um, although I have to say, uh, after I did, one of my colleagues came up to me and said, uh, that was, you know, that was pretty gutsy to give a you know, closing argument without notes in an impeachment uh, case. And I, I said, I'm glad you didn't say that beforehand <laughs> because you probably would have freaked me out. But uh, in any event, um, I, I have to say I have the greatest admiration for some of our newest members uh, that come from very difficult districts uh, for which this was a politically very challenging vote. But so many of them are service members, former service members, uh, and they have a real sense of duty. And, uh, and boy, did they live up to that last night. Of course, one of those being Gil Cisneros uh, from Orange County as well. So we, we asked all of the local uh, Republicans that represent uh, Southern California and Northern California in Congress to join us. They all declined the, the, the invitation for today. Um, President Trump literally <laughs> held a rally at the exact time that you specifically were speaking and came out to speak. Here's some of what he had to say. It doesn't really feel like we're being impeached. Do you? <laughs> the country is doing better than ever before. We did nothing wrong. What's your response to that? Well, you know, first of all, the reason you can't get uh, any of the local Republican members to come on today is you would naturally ask them, well, do you think it's OK that the president uh, asked this foreign power to investigate his political rival? They can't answer that question. And if you watched the eight hours of their arguments on the House floor, None of them wanted to go near the president's conduct because it is so immoral and wrong and unconstitutional. Uh, in terms of the president, look, those rallies are a, are nar a narcotic for him. Um, you know, I think he stews uh, and seethes in the uh, White House, uh, and he likes to go before adoring crowds because this president can't stand to have anybody stand up to him. And so to go to a crowd that is sort of built into fawn over him uh, is what he needs uh, at the end of the day. But look, the president knows, and this is what he's seething about, his conduct brought us here. His conduct has made him only the third president in history to be impeached, uh, his misconduct. And he's going to have to live with that. And he's going to have to live with knowing that that stain will travel with him through the rest of his life and through the rest of history. Part of the question about what's next is when will the Senate actually get this case for a trial? There are some on the left that are now suggesting that Speaker Pelosi shouldn't send it to the Senate at all because Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, has already said that uh, he's basically going to acquit the president and work with the White House in doing so. Do you believe that? Do you believe that the article should be held in the House essentially indefinitely? Well, I think the Speaker has said that she intends to send the articles to the, to the Senate for trial, but she wants a fair trial. Uh, and I think, frankly, the President should get a fair trial and the American people should have a fair trial that brings out the facts 
overwhelmingly Americans want to hear. What does John Bolton have to say, the one who called this whole thing uh, a drug deal and, and asked his staff to go report it to the lawyers? Uh, what does Mick Mulvaney have to say? M Mulvaney is the one who said publicly, yes, there was a quid pro quo, essentially that was the import of his comments, uh, and get over it. Uh, there's going to be politics and foreign policy. Um, well, he's the one who effectuated the hold and aid for the president. Obviously, he has important first-hand information to share. Uh, and then there's a mountain of documents that the White House has refused to turn over. Uh, I think the American people are entitled to see what's in those documents. So if and they, what we have seen already so if is they pretty don't, incriminating. Though, but the, the Mitch McConnell has suggested that there shouldn't be any witnesses. If, if he doesn't agree to have those people testify, do you think that the article should be sent over? Well, that'll be a decision the Speaker will have to make. Uh, but again, I think what we should be pushing for, rather than the debating about the weather and the when of the articles being transmitted, is let's have a fair trial in the Senate. Uh, let's require the senators to go on record and vote. Do they want to allow the American people to see the documentary evidence, or don't they? Do they want to allow the American people to hear from people like Pompeo and people like Bolton and Mulvaney and others, or don't they? And the answer is pretty resounding. Uh, now, Mitch McConnell may want to lash up all he can with the president because he exists to do the bidding of the president, but that's not what the American people want. So when the, there is a, a trial in the Senate, assuming that there is, um, then the House has to assign managers to manage this case, present the case. Uh, the Speaker has said she's not going to announce who that is yet, but should we, should we assume that there's a really, really good chance you're going to be one of them? Well, uh, you know, I've certainly been discussing uh, the managers with the Speaker, and there are no shortage of people who are very interested in serving on the manager team. Uh, I, I'm not at liberty to obviously go into those conversations, but I've told the speaker that I'll play whatever role she'd like me to play. Well, one person who uh, chose to have an interesting role in all this was Tulsi Gabbard, Democratic presidential candidate, member of Congress, voting present uh, on this issue. What do you make of voting present on the issue of impeachment? Uh, well, honestly, I don't understand that. Uh, uh, and in many respects, I think it's a cop-out. Um, the evidence is quite overwhelmingly uh, overwhelming, and you either think that it results uh, in impeachment or you don't. Uh, I think many people are speculating that this may signal that she wants to run as an independent and neither wants to alienate the left nor the right. But look, we're all operating today, whether we're running for some other office or not, under the obligation we took when we took the oath. And I think that oath requires us to, to take a position on an issue like this that is of such seminal importance. There are so many issues before the House this week. You acting on the USMCA, a big trade deal, acting on prescription drugs. Uh, you folks have also acted in the past on the issue of guns. Uh, the biggest issue locally in Southern California in your district is homelessness. Um, and there are some critics uh, that say, while you all are busy dealing with the issue of impeachment, there are people literally dying on the streets and the problem continues to get worse. What do you say to those critics? And what more could be done by the House and by Congress to help on the issue of homelessness? Well, you know, I would say this. You know, first of all, the, one of the bills you mentioned that we just passed, uh, the funding bill for the federal government, uh, makes a, a substantial increase in the investment and funding to address the problem of homelessness. So we are addressing this uh, even as we work on other issues like prescription drugs, like doing away with this uh, salt tax penalty on California residents. Uh, but, but there is far more that we need to do. I've introduced a couple specific uh, bills to try to deal with the homelessness situation, to create tax incentives, uh, to create more affordable housing, to make sure that we also uh, prioritize the housing for our homeless veterans. Uh, so I'm certainly working on it. Uh, frankly, it's been a priority of mine for the last 20 years since I first, uh, as a state legislator, got funding for the homeless shelter in Pasadena Union Station. Uh, and it's going to require a whole of government effort from the federal, state, and local level. Uh, there isn't going to be a one size fits all. But what we have been doing in Congress and what we have to do is both doing our oversight work, doing our work in terms of accountability, uh, and impeachment is the ultimate form of accountability, but at the same time legislating. And we have passed over 400 bills that address things like the homelessness crisis, like the cost of prescription drugs, like the epidemic of gun violence, and they are sitting in the Senate because Mitch McConnell won't act on them. 
The problem has not been that we can't legislate in the House while we were working on oversight. We did, and in very significant and substantial terms. The problem is Mitch McConnell, at the urging of the president, doesn't want any of this to become law, and that is a very different problem and different issue. Well, and as we wrap things up, we always like to have a little bit of fun on this show. I, I can only imagine how exhausted you must be. We're going into the holiday season. I'm just curious, at your home, is your table a politics-free zone? <laughs> Do families get into debates? What, what's it like at home for the holidays with the shifts? Well, uh, there are times when I wish it was a politics-free zone uh, <laughs> at home. Uh, and I have to say, can we please stop talking about this? But um, I'm really looking forward to the holidays uh, as a chance to kind of get away from it, uh, recharge my batteries a bit, take a deep breath. Uh, you know when you're looking forward to either a plane ride or a train ride, uh, that you're uh, working too hard because if you're looking forward to spending long hours in a confined space, then uh, that pretty much sums up where you are. Uh, so <laughs> I wish uh, all your viewers and uh, wish you a happy Hanukkah, a Merry Christmas, and a very happy New Year. Well, same to you. Happy Hanukkah to you, Congressman. Uh, happy New Year to you and your family. And um, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us on one of the biggest uh, weeks of your career. Congressman Adam Schiff, we appreciate the time. Thanks, Alex. Thank you very much, Congressman. Really appreciate it, and uh, hopefully you can get some rest. And uh, it was, it was a great, very gracious of you to take time today. Oh, it's a pleasure. You know, I really think you do a great job, and it's really always a, a treat to be on your show.